Brent. Matthew. Brent Matthew. Paul Rolig. Barbara Fairchild. Be next. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee and uh, this assembly, I stand before you to speak in support of House Bill Number Two. Thank you for this this opportunity to speak. My name is Dr. Brent Matthew. I've studied human biology and psychology for over 30 years. I am a man of faith that lives in Boise for over 20 years. I am a heterosexual male. I love many women, men and children. And my heart aches for the suffering I witness and experience among our people in Idaho because of discrimination and inequity due to sexual orientation and gender identity. I know many homosexual and some bisexual human beings, including a family member. I've witnessed what they've experienced. I suffer in society as a majority male because of my sexual orientation and gender identity. I feel and acknowledge and understand the fears that people are expressing, that life happens and bad things happen. <coughs> and I feel compassion for the dilemma that's before you. Because really, it requires the wisdom of Solomon to find a way to serve people and fulfill your oaths to the Constitution. As a man of faith, I offer this blessing. As salam wa baraka alaikum. That's Arabic for blessings and peace be upon this assembly. We've heard of the Bible, which begins in Hebrew. Bereshith bera Elohim wat the Shemaim wat the Aretz. Elohim, the one in the many, created us all. And as the founding fathers of this country and this state knew and testified in the Constitution that all human beings are granted universal human rights which are self-evident and inalienable. Government's role is not to give what God has already given. Whether you pass this bill or not, every human being has equal human rights in the eyes of God. What government's role, per the Constitution, is to provide equal protection under the law. Now, that said, I acknowledge the difficulty, the fear, that people face. But one step forward to setting our people on the path to liberty, truth, and justice for all is to pass House Bill Number 2. Please take that step. Pass House Bill Number 2. Add the words. Thank you. I stand for questions. Are there questions? Are there questions? Hearing none, thank you. Paul Rolig. We have 
just a few minutes left this morning, so we've got to move on. Please, please be as brief as possible. I will. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, good morning. My name is Paul Rolig, and I live in District 15 in West Boise. Thank you very much for hearing this bill. I am a member of the Board of Directors of Humanists of Idaho, and I am also a media contact for the Treasure Valley Coalition of Reason. TV Corps is an umbrella organization of half a dozen secular groups in southwest Idaho. And I represent non-religious voters throughout our state. We support this bill as written because, as mentioned in the Affirmations of Humanism, we attempt to transcend divisive parochial loyalties based on race, religion, gender, nationality, creed, class, sexual orientation, or ethnicity, and strive to work together for the common good of humanity. It is way past time to extend the civil rights protection to our gay, lesbian, and transgender brothers and sisters. Mr. Chairman, opponents of this act have claimed that it creates special rights, when the truth is it does precisely the opposite, namely it protects equal rights. Why do those opponents bear false witness on this point? They give other completely illogical arguments. Opponents have claimed that this act is not needed because there is no discrimination against gay and lesbian people now. However, now that this act is actually being heard, opponents suggest that they should be given special rights to be exempt from it. In other words, so they can continue to engage in exactly the kind of discrimination they have been claiming does not happen now. The clincher is that they want to base these special rights on their religion. Our view is that all Idaho citizens should live by the same laws and rules. Idaho citizens have complete freedom of religion to attend any church, temple, synagogue, mosque, kingdom hall, or coven that they wish, or none at all, and to conduct their own lives accordingly. Freedom of religion is not threatened in any way by treating one's fellow citizens as equals. Therefore, we oppose special rights for religious people to discriminate. Mr. Chairman, many of those who have testified here seem to believe that the large plaque on the wall behind you depicts the great seal of the Church of Idaho. I hope that you and the members of this committee remember that it actually depicts the great seal of the state of Idaho. I hope that you also remember that one of the bedrock principles on which our great nation was founded is that church and state are to be separate. Please do pass House Bill 2 as it is written. Please do not amend it. Thank you. Are there questions? Thank you, sir. Barbara Fairchild, followed by Lauren Walker and Tamara Darwin. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> members of the committee, thank you for hearing us today. My name is Barbara Fairchild. I live in Boise. I'm a third generation Idahoan or fifth generation Idahoan. And uh, I wanted to tell you a couple of stories about some friends of mine. Many years ago, I had a friend who had to move down to Twin Falls for a new job. He packed up all his furniture and personal belongings, drove down to Twin Falls, and had to live with his boss for a month. That's how long it took to find somebody who was willing to rent to him. I had another friend, a very dear friend, who I met in the workplace. He was very good at his job. He was always very professional. One day, a coworker approached me and said, I'm going to tell the boss that your friend is gay. I begged him not to do that. He did anyway. I watched him walk into the office. After a little bit, he came walking back out, approached my friend and said, the boss wants to see you. My friend walked in, they shut the door. After a very short time, my friend walked back out with tears in his eyes. And I ran over to him and I said, what happened? And he says, I just got fired. He was devastated. I was heartbroken for him. One week later, he committed suicide. 
The company I work for now, I've been with them for 30 years. All of the restrooms are unisex. And in 30 years, not one employee has complained about it. Not one. Let me tell you, um, I am heterosexual. I chose as an adult to be baptized. So I am, I do have my religious streak in me. I am also a registered Republican. I heard the implied threats yesterday that if you pass House Bill 2 to the floor, you will be voted out of office. <laughs> this is Idaho. All you need is an R behind your name. Please. That was a hollow threat. Please. Uh, some of us here don't think comments like that are very funny. I'm sorry. I Okay, that said, I've heard people say that God doesn't make mistakes. People do. That may very well be true. But biology does make mistakes. <clears throat> Consider the two-headed goat or the child born with no arms. And who isn't aware of conjoined twins? There's also the rare occurrence of infants born with both male and female genitalia. Um, unfortunately, the parents are faced with the decision at birth of determining surgically what sex that child will be. I was watching a show on, um, I can't remember what the program was, it was several years ago, and they covered this issue. They went and interviewed the parents of some of these children. There was one set of parents who decided their child would be male, a boy, and tried to raise him as such. At a very early age, I think it was like five years old, the child began objecting to her parents for forcing her to dress like a boy. She informed them that she was a girl and wanted to wear dresses. The parents were crushed, realizing they'd made the wrong decision. People who oppose House Bill 2 like to say that everyone is already protected under Idaho Human Rights Act. Let me remind them that blacks and women had to fight long and hard before they were granted equal status as U.S. citizens. Before that, discrimination against them was legal and rampant. Does it still occur? Yes. But it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. All Americans are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness unless they have been convicted of a crime. Homosexuality is not a crime. But under current law, it is legal to discriminate against gays. They have no legal recourse. Those who say their rights will be violated if House Bill 2 is passed need to understand two things. Freedom of speech does not equal freedom of action if that action causes harm to another person. Number two, freedom of religion does not entitle someone to forcefully impose their beliefs on others, especially when that violates their civil rights. Being LGBT is not a lifestyle choice. No one would choose to live a life that strips them of the opportunity to experience security and happiness. Opponents to House Bill 2 say that the Bible specifies that homosexuality is a sin. The Bible also endorses slavery and says that a woman who commits adultery shall be stoned to death. Shall we change all laws to strictly adhere to the Bible? We cannot allow religion to dictate the laws of this land. That is precisely the problem in the Middle East. I ask you to make a decision without bias, with cool heads, and to remember that you were elected to represent all Idahoans, not just those who express religious indignation. This is not a religious issue. This is a civil rights issue. I ask you to do the right thing and approve House Bill 2. Thank you. Are there questions? Hearing none, thank you. We have two more to testify this morning, but we do need to move along because uh, uh, we need to get up to the floor just as quickly as we can. Lauren Walker. My name is Lauren Walker, uh, representing myself as a citizen of Idaho. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. Um, my children are fifth-generation Idahoans, and I love this state. 
and part of it is because we can sit in a room. I, I've been uh, pleased by the way that we've been able to sit shoulder to shoulder for the last two days and debate such a, such a sensitive topic with friendship and kindness. That's what Idaho is. That's why I live here. That's why I love Idaho. While I recognize there are exceptions to this kindness in this state, I would have us all remember that we live here because of the kindness that is shown each and every day in our communities, in our schools, in our workplaces. And uh, I would just add a couple of things as I've sat through the last couple of days. Uh, the, the first one is the, uh, there's been some confusion as to the definition of sexual orientation. And I think this is very important as we try to legislate and uh, dealing with legislation in terms we often, uh, th those come back around. And uh, I was just noticing on Facebook there are 50 different definition, definitions of sexual orientation. Quite frankly, as I went, I couldn't even define some of them. Um, I, I didn't understand many of them. And I would venture to say that uh, no one in this room would in some cases. And so those definitions are very, very critical. Uh, the other point uh, that I'd like to make, and there have been some just heart-wrenching uh, testimonies of individuals who have uh, endured great loss, and, and I empathize. Um, my family lost uh, four children to tragic uh, automobile accidents, and, and there is nothing worse than the loss, uh, especially of a young one. And so I, 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 uh, I empathize with that. At the same time, I think that there are studies that have shown uh, that in countries, and I, and I looked at some studies specifically in the Netherlands and Denmark, where the suicide rate for people with um, uh, gender, different gender identifications and sexual orientations uh, by passing laws did not impact those statistics at all. And so by passing laws, I think many have suggested that those, uh, those incidences would be reduced. Statistics are showing that that's not the case. Uh, and so I, I come back around and, and just suggest that um, we don't need another law to teach us or to tell us how to be kind. We need more kindness. I would urge you to vote no on House Bill 2 and vote yes to kindness and understanding in our homes, in our communities, in our, and quite frankly, if we would exert all of the energy that we're putting into this to instilling kindness into our own children, in our own families, in our own schoolrooms, in our own workplaces, I think we could all continue to be very happy with the state that we all love. Thank you. Are there questions? questions? Thank you. Tamara Durbin. Welcome to State Affairs. Thank Please you. Please state your name for the record. Tamara Durbin, Chairperson, House State Affairs Committee. I really sincerely thank you for this opportunity to speak before you today. I am a private citizen. I live in Nampa, Idaho. I have been an Idaho resident for 23 years. I speak on my behalf as well as my husband's, Jeff Darvin, who could not be here today. Together we enjoy six fantastic children and a beautiful grandbaby. Five of our six children are grown and living outside of our home, but in the local Boise, Nampa area. I am a small business owner. I have worked part-time for the city of Nampa for over 16 years. I am a Christian. My husband and I serve on the vestry at Grace Episcopal Church in Nampa, Idaho, and enjoy that very much. I am here today in full support of House Bill Number 2. My 16-year-old son, Oliver, stood before you yesterday morning and spoke to you about a minute number of the challenges he has faced as a transgender young man. I am in awe of his courage, his self-confidence, and the grace that he extends to people that judge him in very harsh and dehumanizing ways. The journey is not easy. 
It is something you cannot understand unless it is yours personally to walk. Which bathroom should he use? Should he really, while physically appearing every bit the young man that he is to the casual observer, walk into a lady's restroom because he has a female genitalia that the casual observer cannot see and has no right to even know about? I have not seen my son use a public restroom in over three years. I saw him rush home from school every day, drop his books and run to our bathroom, barely making it at times because of not being safe in restrooms at school. His assigned at birth female gender restrooms were not safe to him. We talked on the car drive here yesterday about his excitement to try to get a job this summer working with grade school children at the Nampa Recreation Center in their Kids in Action child care program. Then we realized, if he even makes it past the interview process, after having to mark female as his gender, but sit and talk in his evening male voice to the interviewer, it would be nothing less than a small miracle. Then we also remembered that swimming is a major part of the summer program that takes place at Nampa Recreation Center. Do you think they'll be able to accommodate the locker room situation, he asked me. I said, I don't know, Oliver, but let's take this one day at a time. We have heard a lot of testimony, and in an attempt to not keep repeating what has been said, I would like to briefly state that I believe adding the words sexual orientation and gender identity to the Idaho Human Rights Act, Human Rights Act is the right thing to do. The LGBTQ community has been oppressed, rejected, and discriminated against always. It's not always visible to the eye, because they do not feel safe to even be who they are to the public eye in many cases. Our religious freedom is a huge blessing that we enjoy as citizens of this country, but unfortunately much of this discrimination and oppression has happened at the very hand of religion. This is not the first time in history that religion has been used as justification to treat a group of citizens as second class or less than in the eyes of God and therefore deserving of not having the same rights, privileges, and protections afforded by the laws of the country to each and every individual. It is not the first time the government has had to step in, draw lines, and lead the way towards fairness. I'm sure many a person clutched their Bibles 50 years ago and quoted scriptures about their rights to not have to serve black people in the restaurants or places of doing business in the public sector because it was considered Christian to call them a second class or devalued um, class of citizens. The separation of church and state is also a legal right, a protection in this country. I'm sure business owners were irate when they were told they could no longer tell black people they were not welcome in their places of business and yet our nation is only the better for it. Our nation will be better for the decisions that will be made to afford protection to this long abused group of citizens as well. Will there be growing pains? Yes. Will there be a learning curve? Yes. Will it require patience, tolerance, and understanding? Yes. Will it be worth it? Yes. Does it threaten the religious freedom of our citizens by telling them they can no longer worship believe and practice their faith in the private sector the way that they choose to? No. Please add my son and the other beautiful members of this oppressed community. Please add the words, no more, no less, and thank you for hearing me. Are there questions? Thank you. Thank you. Committee, we're due on the floor. Uh, make haste getting up there so, so we can get recorded as present and, and do the business we have up there. Um, we will we will reconvene after our recess at at uh, 5 p.m. again uh, this afternoon. So we'll stand at recess until that time. <laughs>